You ask ChatGPT a question, and somehow it gives you a perfect answer that sounds like it was written by a human. Magic, right? But how did we create a computer that can chat with you like your smartest friend? Today, I'll explain how ChatGPT actually works to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand why this computer can write poems, solve math problems, and even argue with you about whether pineapple belongs on pizza. It turns out it's not actually magic. Shocker, I know. It's not a tiny person trapped inside your computer, furiously typing up responses, and it's not reading every book in the world in real time to answer your questions. What it is, actually, is a very clever pattern-matching machine that learned to predict what word should come next in a sentence by reading billions and billions of examples. Imagine you have a super smart friend who's read every single book, every website, every article, and every story ever written. And not just read them once, but memorized every single pattern of how words fit together. This friend noticed that when someone writes, the cat sat on the, the next word is usually mat or chair or table. They never just randomly say elephant or spaceship. That super smart friend is basically what ChatGPT is, except instead of a person, it's a computer program that found patterns in more text than any human could ever read in a thousand lifetimes. But here's where it gets really interesting. ChatGPT doesn't actually understand what words mean the way that you and I do. When you hear the word dog, you might picture a furry animal that barks and wags its tail. ChatGPT doesn't see that picture. Instead, it knows that the word dog often appears near words like bark, tail, pet, walk, and treats. It learned that these words like to hang out together, kinda like how you know that peanut butter and jelly are friends, or how you know that when someone says knock knock, you're supposed to say, who's there? Think of it like this. Imagine you're playing a game where someone gives you the beginning of a sentence, and you have to guess what comes next. If I say, I'm going to brush my, you'd probably guess teeth or hair, right? You wouldn't guess elephant or homework. That's because you've heard people say, brush my teeth and brush my hair many times before. ChatGPT plays this same guessing game, but it's incredibly good at it because it's seen billions of examples of how people put words together. Now, let's talk about how ChatGPT actually learned all these patterns. It doesn't happen overnight like magic. It took a very long time and a lot of very powerful computers working together. The process is called training, and it's kind of like teaching a baby to talk. Except this baby can process millions of sentences every single second. During training, ChatGPT was shown enormous amounts of text. We're talking about books, websites, articles, stories, and conversations. Millions and millions of them. But here's the clever part. The trainers didn't show ChatGPT complete sentences. Instead, they showed it sentences with words missing, and ChatGPT had to guess what the missing words were. It was like the most intense fill-in-the-blank test ever. Now at first, ChatGPT was terrible at this game. I mean, it would guess completely random words that made no sense at all. If you showed it, the sky is, then it might guess purple or sandwich, or even 17. But every time it guessed wrong, the trainers would show it the correct answer. They'd say, no silly computer, the sky is blue and ChatGPT would adjust its guessing strategy just a tiny bit. Then, they'd try again with a different sentence. This happened billions and billions of times. And slowly, very slowly, ChatGPT started to notice patterns. It began to understand that sky often goes with blue, that cats often meow, and that when someone asks, how are you, the response is usually something like, I'm fine, thank you. It was like watching a baby learn to speak. Except this baby was learning from every conversation that had ever happened on the internet. But ChatGPT isn't just one big brain. It's actually made up of many smaller parts called neural networks. Think of these like tiny teams of workers, each specializing in different jobs. Some teams are really good at understanding grammar. Others are great at remembering what happened earlier in a conversation. Some teams focus on understanding context, like knowing that bank means a place with money when you're talking about deposits, but it means the side of a river when you're talking about fishing. These neural networks work together like a really well-organized group project. When you ask ChatGPT a question, different teams jump into action. The grammar team makes sure that the response follows proper sentence structure. The context team makes sure that the answer makes sense based on what you've been talking about. The knowledge team pulls up relevant information from all those patterns it learned during training. And the personality team makes sure that the response sounds natural and helpful, not robotic and weird. Now the really cool part is how ChatGPT handles the actual process of generating a response. 
When you type a question, ChatGPT doesn't immediately know what its full answer will be. Instead, it generates one word at a time, always asking itself, given everything that came before, what's the most likely next word? It's like playing that word guessing game that we talked about earlier, but doing it continuously for every single word in its response. So if you ask, what's the weather like? ChatGPT might start by thinking that the first word should probably be I or the or today. Let's say it picks I. Then it thinks, okay, I started with I, so what usually comes after that? Maybe it picks don't, then it thinks, I don't. What comes next? And it might choose have. And then it just continues this process, word by word, building up its response. I don't have access to real-time weather data, but you can check. Each word choice is based on all the patterns that ChatGPT learned during training, plus everything that's happened in your current conversation. It is constantly balancing what it learned from all those books and websites with what makes sense in the context of your specific question. Now, you might wonder how ChatGPT remembers what you talked about earlier in your conversation. After all, it's just guessing one word at a time, so how does it keep track of whether or not you're talking about dogs or homework or your favorite ice cream flavor? This is where something called attention comes in, and it's probably the coolest part of how ChatGPT works. Think of attention like having a really good memory for important details. When you're having a conversation with a friend, you naturally remember the important parts of what they said earlier. If they mention that they've got a test tomorrow, then you might ask about it later. ChatGPT has a very similar ability, except it can pay attention to everything that's been said in your conversation simultaneously. Every time ChatGPT generates a new word, it looks back at everything that's been said so far and asks, what parts of this conversation are most important for figuring out what word comes next? If you asked about your pet dog five minutes ago and now you're asking about buying food, ChatGPT can connect those dots and realize that you're probably asking about dog food, not people food. But here's something really important to understand. ChatGPT doesn't actually know facts the way that you do. I mean, when you know that Paris is in France, you've got a clear, definite piece of knowledge. ChatGPT doesn't store facts like that. Instead, it learns that words Paris and France often appear together in sentences, along with words like capital and city. So when you ask about Paris, it can generate text that sounds like it knows Paris is the capital of France, but it's really just using the patterns that it learned to predict what words should go together. And this is why ChatGPT sometimes makes mistakes, or says things that sound confident but are actually wrong. It's not lying to you or trying to trick you, it's just following the patterns that it's learned. And sometimes those patterns lead to incorrect conclusions. It's like if you learn that red and apple often go together. You might assume that all apples are red, even though some are green or yellow. The training process also included another important step called fine-tuning. After ChatGPT learned all those basic patterns from books and websites, human trainers had conversations with it and rated its responses. They would tell it which answers were helpful and which ones were confusing or wrong. This helped ChatGPT learn not just how to predict words, but how to be a good conversational partner. Think of it like learning to be polite. You might naturally learn that please and thank you are good words to use, but you also need someone to teach you when and how to use them properly. The human trainers help ChatGPT learn to be helpful, harmless, and honest in its conversations. ChatGPT also learned to follow instructions. During training, people would give it tasks like write a poem about cats or explain photosynthesis simply, and then rate how well it followed those instructions. Over time, ChatGPT got better at understanding what people wanted and delivering responses that matched their requests. One of the most amazing things about ChatGPT is that it can handle tasks that it was never specifically trained to do. I mean, nobody taught it how to write haikus or solve specific math problems or create recipes. But because it learns such rich patterns about how language works, it can combine those patterns in creative ways to tackle new challenges. It's like how once you learn the rules of grammar and a big vocabulary, you can write stories about anything, even if you've never written about that specific topic before. The computers that run ChatGPT are incredibly powerful. I mean, we're talking about machines that can perform trillions of calculations per second. So when you send a message to ChatGPT, it gets processed by these supercomputers that work together to analyze your question, consider all the relevant patterns, and generate a response. And all of this is happening in just a few seconds, which is pretty remarkable when you think about how much computational work is involved. ChatGPT also has some built-in safety features. During training, it learned to avoid generating harmful, offensive, or dangerous content. 
It's like having a really good sense of what's appropriate to say in difficult situations. If you ask it to help you with something harmful, it'll politely decline and often suggest a better alternative. But ChatGPT isn't perfect, and it's important to remember its limitations. It can't browse the internet in real time, so its knowledge has a cutoff date. It can't learn or remember information from one conversation to the next. Each time you start a new chat, it's like meeting ChatGPT for the first time. And while it's very good at generating human-like text, it doesn't have consciousness or emotions the way that humans do. So, to recap this whole adventure in artificial intelligence, ChatGPT learned to chat by reading billions of examples of human text and finding patterns in how we put words together. It generates responses by predicting one word at a time, using all those patterns that it learned plus the context of your conversation. It's like having a friend who's read everything ever written and is really, really good at guessing what you want to hear next. Now go, have a conversation with an AI and remember that you're basically talking to the world's most sophisticated word prediction machine. Don't let it convince you that it has feelings though.